Hello everyone, welcome to the Young Inspire section of PyCon APEC 2022. I'm Cecilia Li. I'm the host of this section. Today we have a special guest, Amos Chen from Hong Kong. And uh, Amos will share us his journey of learning Python. Hi Amos. Hi Cecilia. Hi, can you introduce yourself? Uh, so I'm a Form 3 student from Hong Kong, studying at LaSalle College, who has been learning programming since uh, primary four. Okay, can you tell us why do you want to learn Python? Uh, I wanted to learn Python because it, it was useful and fun, and it seemed like an easy to learn language and was a quite and to me, it was a good starting point. It was also quite useful in data science, machine learning, and other fields. And uh, and most of all, it was just because it was, to me, it was very fun to learn something new that is uh, kind of easy and also useful. Mm. Yes, it, Python is fun and useful. And uh, how do you start your journey of learning Python? I started my journey of learning Python uh, by attending a workshop from uh, Hour of Code Hong Kong. I attended many of their workshops and talks, which introduced Python as well as other programming knowledge to me. And I also bought some books and used some online platforms and resources to learn Python. Well, can you tell us uh, what kind of organization is the Hour of Code? Uh, the Hour of Code Hong Kong. It's a nonprofit organization that aims to introduce the basics of programming in one hour workshops and talks. So uh, what kind of resource does the Hour of Call provide? They provide online platforms and book recommendations as well as workshops on all sorts of STEM topics that are all free. I learned of two very useful platforms, Code.org and Grot Learning from them, both of which have helped me a lot on my journey of learning Python. Hmm. So can you introduce us what is code.org? Uh, code.org is, is kind of like a platform for beginners to learn programming and computational thinking. They provide courses on Python, Blockly, and other languages. And, and, this, and they use a mostly visual way of learning. They show you your progress with different graphics and game and little games that you can try to learn programming from. And I think that it's it's very good for uh for children and beginners like uh, myself when I started out in primary four. Hmm. So it sounds very fun. Can you introduce us what is Grok learning? Uh, for Grok learning, it takes an a sort of a sort of different approach to uh, teaching as it as it uses a more uh, text-based uh, kind of teaching. It mainly teaches Python, but it also offers courses on JavaScript as well as other languages and and uh, some other cybersecurity as well as other STEM topics. They offer courses which all, which all have some uh, different challenges and questions in them that for you to practice as well as to learn at the same time. Mm -hmm. So besides uh, these two websites, do you recommend any other learning resource? Uh, I also recommend uh, the documentations and uh, the documentations on, on different modules and packages, which can be found on docs.python.org, as well as uh, Stack Overflow for debugging and general programming help. In addition, uh, W3 Schools is also a quite, uh, quite a nice uh, platform for you to learn the syntax of different languages. Hmm. I'm, all, I'm very impressed that you use Stack Overflow too, because it's also a very useful website, which usually programmers use every day. And uh, do you try to ask some questions in Stack Overflow? Personally, I haven't asked any questions on Stack Overflow, but uh, 
but because most of the time I can just search for a question, my question on Stack Overflow, and it's already mm -hmm. been asked and answered. So uh, I haven't really had the need to actually ask them yet. Yeah, yeah, I agree that that is the main answer to our question on Stack Overflow. And uh, can you tell us how do you practice your programming skill and problem solving skill? Uh, I mainly practice them by completing exercises on the learning platforms I mentioned, as well as mm -hmm. by doing many projects when I started out. Uh, usually, I follow instructions in books and or create my own projects from from the things I've learned in the workshops from uh, from the out of court Hong Kong. In addition, I also participate in competitive programming, uh, and I mainly do this by, by practicing on Code Forces and the XJY platform. Uh, for competitive programming, however, I use mostly C++, but also Python sometimes. I also participate in competitive programming competitions, such as the HKY, uh, the SCIC, which is the Hong Kong Secondary School's Software Development Invitational Contest, and the SSCC, which is the Hong Kong Secondary School Coding Challenge. So do you do some fun mini project? Do you want to uh, share one of us? one of it with us i don't think i have the files on my computer right now but uh but uh i in my opinion the uh the most fun mini projects are probably the first ones that i've that i've completed uh if i recall correctly the first one that i've complete i've completed are are with python and and the module turtle uh mm -hmm. i I learned of turtle from uh, out of Code Hong Kong, and and yeah, I, if I recall correctly, I made my first mini project uh, as a sort of game. I don't exactly remember what it was, but it, it actually it was the most fun, and it was the most fun to me because uh, it was like the first time I've accomplished something with with a newly learned language, uh, mm -hmm. Python. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes the first one is the most impressed one. Yeah, so uh, what do you learn from your experience in the Hong Kong Olympic in Informatics, aka HKOI? From competitive programming competitions such as the HKOI, I mainly learn about computational thinking and problem solving skills, as well as some uh, computer science knowledge about algorithms, data structures, graph theory, etc. Mm -hmm. And those are pretty useful because I am, I'm also trying to pursue a, uh, I might also pursue a CS degree in university. I'm aiming to pursue a CS degree in university as well as a career aimed at uh, software development. So I think these will be very useful for my career and for my uh, further studying. Mm -hmm. That's nice. You think about career, it's a little bit early, but I think it's a very good try. And uh, you mentioned that you are interested in uh, learning machine learning and the data science. Can you tell us why do you want to learn machine learning and data science? Uh, it seemed interesting and it was quite a new thing. So uh, also it had, it had a lot of practical uses in every field. So I want to learn about it and try to use it to uh, uh, kind of make something that benefits my uh, society and just try to uh, experiment with it mostly because it seemed really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can you tell us how do you set up your learning goal? Uh, I set my learning goals by trying to get knowledge on one specific topic and to create something with it, like a mini project with it, or complete exercises on it if I'm learning about algorithm. For example, if I'm learning about an algorithm, uh, I'll try to, to complete tasks on code forces on it and and on the XOI platform. And the selected topic it's mostly based on what interests me or what's related to the things that I've recently learned. Mm -hmm. So can you share what's your plan for your learning path? 
Uh, so my current goal is to learn how to use TensorFlow Keras and to create a neural network for object recognition because I think that mainly because it, it has seemed like a good path for beginners like for beginners to uh, like me to learn about uh, machine learning. Mm -hmm. So do you start to learning TensorFlow? I started learning about TensorFlow when I attended a course from from HKGE, which uh, which introduced TensorFlow and uh, and mainly TensorFlow Keras and and how to create a convoluted neural network with it. I'm still not ex I I can't say that I'm very familiar with it, but uh, I'll try to I'll try to learn more about it. Given that the internet has lots and lots of resources, and I'll try to. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll try to make something about object recognition, which, mm -hmm. which is, which uh, from what I've, from the research I've done online is, is a good starting point for beginners like me. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a great start. It's a great way to start learning machine learning. And uh, so for our audience today, and can you give some advice to the audience? And what advice will you give? Uh, firstly, try to concentrate on one topic or go at a time, and don't be distracted. Uh, this, when you get distracted, like I've done when I started out, it it takes a toll on your efficiency, and you end up not learning much about any much about every, anything at all. And you you may forget about the things that you've you're, uh, you're learning when you try to focus on too many topics and goals at a time. And also make good use of online platforms such as Grot Learning, W3Schools, docs.python.org, and Stack Overflow. And don't be afraid to ask questions or search or look up answers. As, uh, it is, as I think that it is also part of the, asking is also part of the uh, learning process. And also, joining competitions may also help. Uh, I recommend Olympiads and competitive programming competitions for learning about actual algorithms and computational thinking. And for beginners, I suggest competitions like Coder C and the NS and the SF and CSS Challenge from Grot Learning, which uh, which also trains computational thinking, and they also provide you with uh, more knowledge on the syntax and the workings of different languages, uh, mostly Python. Mm -hmm. And also you can try finding friends who are also learning or who are also interested in, to learn and share resources and hold discussions with one another so that you, you can grow with one another and obtain more resources. And you can also ask one another questions that you've encountered. And sometimes they may even solve them better than uh, resources online. And finally, try to take some breaks in between learning. It's great to learn with friends and community. And uh, may I know that what is the biggest challenge that you ever face when you're learning Python? Uh, so the biggest challenge that I faced when I started out learning Python was that when I started, it was really unfamiliar, unfamiliar to me. And uh, first off, the syntax to me was really unfamiliar, though. Uh, so I had to take notes of what I had learned. And uh, I, at start, at start, I oftentimes don't know why my code doesn't work or why it had bugs in them. And mm -hmm. I oftentimes have to Google a lot of resource, to have to Google a lot. And I end up getting kind of frustrated when I don't get when I don't, I when I still don't get why my code doesn't work. However, uh, however, uh, with more time and practice and patience, this actually gets better because uh, because over time I've kind of learned syntax by experience from experience, and also I've kind of learned how to think like a computer does, like how to think logically. And how what kind of what each line means, so that that's one of the things 
what the challenges that I've faced. And the second challenge that I would say is the biggest challenge when I've started learning Python is the vast amount of resources and topics out there. I wanted to almost explore everything at once, but yeah, that's impossible. That's really impossible. You can't, you can't focus on too many things at once. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I ended up not learning much about everything when I started out. And uh, and yes, I eventually, I eventually knew that I should probably focus on one module or one or one algorithm or one syntax that I'm learning and not and not to uh, focus on like 10 or five or six uh, different topics at the same time as that was as that actually affects how your efficiency instead of helping you. Mm -hmm. So uh, since you already learned Python for six, six to seven years, and what is the difference between you, how you code today and how you code seven years ago? Uh, when I coded seven years ago, I don't I don't really knew how my code would run, and I I was just trying to experiment with stuff, and I really wasn't familiar with that syntax, with the syntax, and with all the logic and stuff. Uh, I would say that it's that I I'm starting to understand. I I kind of understand what each line means now, but uh, there, the thing the uh, the thing that I think stayed the same is my curiosity and uh, how I would look up many different things when I was coding. For example, when I need to use a module, I I seven years ago I would look up the documentation. And nowadays, I also, I, I also, I will still look up the documentation. So that is one similarity. And uh, I, th I would say that the main difference is that now I kind of know what I'm trying to do. Whereas seven years ago, I'm just, I'm still trying to experiment. Seven years ago, I was mostly experimenting, and I didn't know the logics behind each line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Amos. Thank you for your sharing. I believe that it will inspire many young people. And thanks for your time. Please join you. EPEC. Please join Python EPEC 2022. It will hold in September 3rd and 4th. Thanks for your time. Okay, thank you, Cecilia. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.